Well, hello. Welcome to the well. It's good to see you and good to have you here. <laughs> that was a great one. welcome. Oh, I feel well. How are you guys going? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm going great. We should give everyone up. A- an update on what's happening here in Melbourne. Yes, yeah. let's. It's pretty crazy because the first episode that we filmed a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. everything was normal here in Melbourne normal. and we were addressing the issue of coronavirus uh-huh. yeah. and we're talking about how it's you know still a serious problem in the world and a lot of countries are facing it worse than he- us here in Australia. Yes. And we were basically living corona-free. We had zero cases mm. every day, uh, no restrictions pretty much at all. And then... Lockdown. Something happened. <laughs> so like literally a week ago... Um, just after we've filmed episode two of The Well, um, <laughs> we, uh, s- someone travelled from India to Adelaide, Australia, wow. and they, they were in a quarantine the there, hotel, doing the right thing, and, and they did their two weeks of quarantine, and as they left that hotel, they contracted coronavirus. They flew to Melbourne, which is where we are, and then it spread. And so we're in a, we're in a strict lockdown right now mm. that the government has yes. put on us, and... For not many cases, just so no. you know. I think we had two new cases uh, today or yesterday <laughs> that yesterday. became false positives. That's right. Uh, but we're still doing another full week of lockdown, so two weeks. So we are really right amongst it right now, figuring out what are we going to do for church yes. um, and how we're going to do that. So there's a rule that you can only have five people running the broadcast in, in the one space. And so with yeah. a big production like us, you can imagine the challenges that that uh, imposes on us. Yes, but you know our team is amazing because everyone jumped to it. Mm. And last Sunday we had our church online. Yep. And I did the preaching. So praise God. And you led as well. I it's did. Because, <laughs> because we found out that at Thursday at midnight, that's when the lockdown was going to start. So Thursday afternoon we had our chapel mm. here. So we recorded a praise and worship set live at chapel. Yeah. Um, knowing that we won't be able to be here in person on Sunday. But this coming Sunday. We have to um, really get the problem-solving thing back out because yeah. we can't have any people in the auditorium except for five. So yeah. the way we're doing it is, um, and we've got a massive building here with different street addresses, so we can get away with doing this. But we're going to have five people in the main auditorium, four people on stage and one camera person, and all the other cameras will be locked off. So we're going to have Pastor Sam and myself leading and then Andy on drums behind us, Josh Ham on bass behind us. That's the main auditorium. Then out the back in another college part of the building, we're going to have the keyboard player, the guitar mm-hmm. two player, and two BVs and a camera person. Wow. And then in another part of the building, we're going to have hosts, um, which, so if you tune in on a Sunday, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah. um, So it's all, you know, it, above the law, but we are just absolutely trying to do the best we can to still, yeah. and we are beaming in the dancers via satellite <laughs> from yeah. their bedrooms or living rooms, wherever they decide their to be garage, dancing. Whatever. Which we talked about that on episode one of having the LED panel. So we brought them back. Yeah. So the production, massive shout out to our production team. They've been awesome. Totally great amazing. hearts, great work yeah. ethic. They're working hard to get all this happening. But anyways, yeah. that's, that's what's been going on. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I want to encourage people with? We go to a lot of effort to make church amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I love about Planet Shakers and the whole team here. Um, people haven't gone, oh, lockdown, what are we going to do? Oh, it's too hard. Everyone's gone. We want people to connect with God. So how can we create an incredible environment for people in their own homes to experience God? And that's one of our tests. Testimonies, I suppose, of the team of people behind the scenes, in front of the camera. They are so passionate about people connecting with Jesus. And that's what I think we need to do as people around the world in every church. We go to the effort Mm. to make people's encounter with God personal, real, powerful, and of course, first class. Oh, I'm just excited that that because of all lockdown stuff, it means the DJing at church is back. <laughs> that last Friday, because obviously we found out on the Thursday that lockdown was happening and then we had boom the next night. Um, we recorded straight after we recorded for church, praise and worship, we recorded boom for praise and worship, which was awesome. Um, but because like boom energy is just so like hype and so exciting and so massive. Um, yeah, I sat and Pastor Andy was preaching and I was DJing behind him and was able to bring that same uh, level of energy and excitement, even though it was just the two of us yeah. in the room by yeah. ourselves. Yeah. So I said, I feel like it's a statement that I just keep saying, but when you get lemons, you make the best lemonade yeah. possible. And mm. so, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there in the same situation struggling with different yeah. things, but ask God to give you creativity in problem solving. There's always a solution and sometimes we don't know it 
straight away, but you, you get together and you believe in faith that God will give you a key mm. and a breakthrough idea. Um, he will do that. He's done it here for us and he can do it for you. So as you can see in the title, this week is a bit of an interesting topic on the well. Has the church lost its praise? Mm. Now, this is a somewhat controversial topic to talk about, but it's a topic that we believe should be talked about uh, because, you know, we have a perspective on on praise in the church and we'll, talk, we'll unpack why we believe what we believe. But we've obviously had the opportunity to travel all around the world to visit many different churches um, to, to actually see firsthand if the church has lost its praise. Pastor Sam, what do you think? Well, I think we should first of all talk about what does the Bible say praise is. That's a good place to start. Not mm. what um, people's, uh, you know, perspective, what their taste is, what yep. their, I don't what know. They feel like doing. Yeah, all of those kind of things. And so we believe that praise is outlined in the Bible, clapping your hands, shouting, dancing, singing, using all the instruments, and even being loud. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all of these words are within Scripture. And so it's not just the Planet Shakers culture. We are trying to give God what He deserves and what He has outlined in the Bible, not what's fashionable, not what people want to do because that's what they feel like doing, not what the latest trend is, but simply what the Bible says. And so, of course, I think some people are readjusting according to people's taste and preferences and maybe even sometimes what their flesh wants. Mm. And so maybe they have dulled down their praise or they're not incorporating everything that's within the Word of God, a part of their praise. And so, yeah, maybe some people have. Maybe. I mean, there is so much we can talk about this. And, you know, Pastor Russell has talked about a lot. So we use this illustration on when we're leading praise as well around the world in different meetings, but we liken it to a sporting event. Like people are so passionate at a sporting event. They are more than happy to jump up out of their seats. They're more than happy to shout at the top of their lungs. Mm -hmm. and, and really part of it is the culture in the, in the, in the sporting event. Um, it, it's expected, everyone feels like that and, and they're happy to do that. And they're doing it because they're passionate about seeing their team win. Mm. And now, if I ask you the question, is Jesus more important than a sporting event? Of course uh -huh. he would say yes. Yeah. And so therefore the, the praise that we wanna give Jesus should outweigh anything that we would do at a sporting event. And you know, there's people in churches that would stand there very um, conservatively and not get into it, but you see them at the sporting event and they would be getting into it. Yeah. That is the wrong way around. Yes. I'm fine with people getting passionate at sporting events, but we need to be even more passionate about uh, God. And part of it is developing that culture in your church mm. and leading from that position. So if, if we don't really believe that as our pra as praise and worship leaders, then we can't expect the culture in the church to f have that. That, mm. um, that same revelation. Yeah. So you might be a, a praise and worship leader in your church and you, and you aren't at that place where you want it to be. You're like, yeah, I really want my congregation to get passionate into it, but they're just not there. Well, this is where you're gonna have to start taking them on that journey yeah. and start with what Pastor Sam said, start reading those scriptures. Mm. Something that we love to do when lead, leading praise is use the Word of God. And it's all through our songs, but if we're exhorting people and talking to the, to the crowd, you know, the Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people, shout to mm. God with a voice of triumph. And it actually says the word loud, mm. yeah, you know, or, or, or make a joyful noise. Now, yeah. now, a noise is not soft, a noise is loud. Make a joyful noise into the Lord. Scripture after scripture after scripture talks about this yeah. stuff. And you can use that as like ammo um, and you shoot it out into the atmosphere and you can see the negative thoughts or the, the, the comfy comfort in people start to dust, start to fall down. And... <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that's how we, we, we approach that with, with praise with such passion yeah. um, because we believe God is worthy of that passion. Absolutely. Praise is fun. It is. Yeah. It's crazy how people, will, like you are saying about the sporting events, people will go to parties or clubs or festivals and dance and jump Ooh. and be crazy. And then they come to church and be reverent and uh, ask for forgiveness for what they did at parties and clubs. And, <laughs> you know, but I mean, there's seven different um, definitions of praise or words that they use for praise in the Bible. Only one of them is to be still and wait and be yes. reverent. The rest of them are like you're saying, clap, shout, mm. dance, be clamorously foolish is one of them. Yeah. Just being yeah. crazy, not caring what people think, yeah. just having fun and giving God all the praise. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then the focus is Jesus. Yeah. 
And it's not um, the opinions of other people. It's Mm. not whether they're going to judge you or pull you down. It's about you using your body. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. It's about you using every attribute of yourself to give God praise. And so it's about your connection between you and God. It's personal. So. Mm. Why allow people's judgment or criticism to hold you back? You might as well just go for it. Because every time we've just gone for it, every time we've allowed the spirit of liberty and freedom, you know, to just take over our meetings, we have seen us step into the miraculous. It's where God's kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven because we are just letting go in our praise. And then, of course, because God inhabits our praises, (laughs) Of course, there are miracles. Mm. Of course, there's breakthrough. Mm. Of course, there's yeah. healings and salvation. And so praise is so powerful and so important within the church. So we can't lose our no, praise. we can't. And I've been very shocked and, and actually saddened um, that there are so many churches out there who don't start with praise. Yeah. Now, you might go, well, I can praise in a slow song. I, I would have a, a kind argument with you about that. Yeah, the, the, the spirit of praise is a celebration. Yes. It's, it's, it is meant to be a festive, the Bible says festive in some versions, yes. festive praise, singing yes. festive songs. Now, now for me, praise is something that opens, and it's for all of us, and it's actually biblical. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. So the Bible is telling us that's how we approach God with praise. Yes. That's why we start every single meeting we do with praise. We don't just start with a worship song. And, yeah. and I know that people will probably argue back, oh, you know, we're not boxed into that. We can start with a slow song. You can start with a slow song, but I can guarantee you, you won't get to that same depth place as if you did start with praise. Praise yeah. breaks it open, breaks open the atmosphere. Mm. It's like a, a massive icebreaker, um, even in the natural, just to get people loosened up and have fun. It's mm. even yeah. just for that, but that's such a small element. But th- what happens in the spiritual atmosphere when we, when we begin to praise you can't, mm. it's, it's a mystery. But but what happens is God moves, inhabits mm. the praises of his people. Totally. And then that makes way for a most amazing worship time. So I want to really encourage people out there, yeah. if you've got fallen into that way of, of going, oh, I've seen other churches and big churches around the world are doing this. Um, I don't agree with it. I, th- I think, you know, I'm going to say it, I'm going to put it out there. I, I think you should be doing praise because mm. yeah. I, it's what God is worthy of. It's what God wants. It's what yes. he desires. And it's not our opinion on it. That's the Bible's opinion. Just yeah. imagine that story about King David dancing before the Lord in his underpants. Imagine <laughs> if he was dancing to a slow song in front of everybody just doing these ones. <laughs> like, that's just, it's already weird without it being super weird. But I like to think of it like praise is, you know, when you're like having a conversation on Zoom or something and while someone's talking, nobody else can talk because their voice cuts off everybody else. And it's like when we praise, we actually cut off yeah. all the other voices and mm. all the other, because, you know, God inhabits yeah. the praises of his people and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The spirit yeah. of the Lord is the enemy must flee. Yeah. Yeah. Praise Praise has a power mm-hmm. that yes. shuts down other things. Yeah. Yeah, so let's do it. Come on, church. Let's praise him. So this week on Behind the Song, I get to show you this bass. Woo! I'm going to show you a one of our songs that we do that's very oriented around the bass and has a great bass line called 24-7-365. <laughs> Okay, so let's break that down a little bit because there was a lot going on there. This song is in the key of E minor, which if you're not a bass player, this is probably the bass player's favourite key because it's all centred around this open E string. And for slapping, it's just gorgeous. And obviously, as you could have been, as you could tell, as you could have told, this song has a lot of slapping and that's a lot of fun. The opening riff of this song sounds like this. I love this song, I love this riff, because it's very um, offbeat with the kick. The kick is playing on every beat, um, but a lot of the riff is around the beat. So we hit beat one together, and then a lot of it's around that, so you can kind of play with the drums a little bit, have a little bit of interplay. So let me break that bit down for you a little bit. It starts with an open E string, which is a nice big, my favourite note to play. And then we do some hammer-ons. So it starts with going from the D up to the E. And you want to do it nice and tight, nice and short. Not that, that's not funky. And then 
Same thing, but up an octave and you pop it. Goes to a G. So I'll play the whole riff, I'll play a little bit slower, so you can play along at home. And then that whole riff goes down a tone from E to D. When it was originally written, Joth did the demo of this. He's a wonderful bass player. He played this thing where... And he went from that high D down to this low D. I can't do that because I'm not as good a bass player as Joth. So what I would do... Just play that D there. Your hands are already there. It's a little bit easier. And then make your way up. Now, the temptation with this song is there's... Lots of fun things you can do. Obviously being a bass player's favorite key. Obviously, um, all the riffs and licks and stuff that we learn when we're slapping are typically in this key. So we have lots of different things that we can play with and we can do. But let me encourage you, restrain yourself. It's not about you, it's about Jesus. That's the whole reason we're doing this. We're praising Jesus. If you do wanna do a little bit of something though, make sure you're doing it when there's no singing. Because otherwise it gets a little bit clunky and a little bit clashy. So you'll hear um, on the album, I'll do some licks like. Not much, just a little bit of spice, a little bit of pepper in there. Um, that's a lot of fun. Another line in the song that I want to show you is this walking bass line. Um, we we'll stop slapping now. Now it's finger style. It's still very fun. It goes like this. So there's a bit going on there. It's based around the chords E, minor, and A. And slow it down for you. Very Motowny, which is a lot of fun. And the great thing about this part of the song, there's lots of other stuff going on in the track, so make sure you don't overplay and don't be too crazy, but there is a little bit of room for you to. Just a little bit of spice in there, you know. It's so important that you're locking in with the drums, locking in with the click, don't go too crazy, don't go overboard, but make sure it's super tight, super clean, and have some super fun. So we love to answer questions every week on The Well, and you can email your question to thewell at planetshakers.com, or you can write it on one of our social media platforms and we will try to answer it for you. So, are you ready, guys? Ready, guys. First question is from Isaac Joseph... Dante's, I believe that's how you say your name, who is in the Planet Shakers design slash creative team wow. and what is their creative process? Oh, yes. How many people we got? I don't know. Let's count. You, me, and Crystal, Michaela, Daryl, Sam. Yes. CJ. Yes. This is dangerous because we might miss someone. Um, and some more. Jen, she helps with yep. admin. Are we missing anyone? Ryan. They, oh, yeah, Ryan. Amy sometimes helps out too. Yeah, she dabbles. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, there's there's a few of us. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Well, tell them a bit more about it. <laughs> What's our process? <laughs> well, we get an every, idea. every Tuesday we have a meeting. Some, most, most Tuesdays, and we get together and we talk as a group about what's uh, up and coming. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, because being in a church this big, there's a lot of design work, a lot of ads that need to be made, all, yeah. a lot of posters, all that kind of stuff. So we will... Um, oh, Tim Chu. Dist Tim Chu as well, distribute know. those things out uh, to the workers. Yeah, and they, they go away and do the work. Yeah, so like, say for example, we've got beautiful conference coming up. Mm -hmm. And so we've got all of these creative elements within that conference. And so then we just divide them up with um, the different people and their different strengths. So yep. Daryl, he's awesome at all of that. Print, design, yep. flat stuff. Yeah, all the 2D stuff, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And then Michaela, she does lots of the, um, what are they called? Yeah, and the... Videos. 
things, the yeah, those things lyric videos and, you know, stuff like that. So we try and give people stuff that they're really good at. So like Crystal, she does our news every single week with a team of students and, yep. um, yeah, everyone sort of gets divvied out their job. Mm. They do their job. They run it past us to get the tick of approval or a little bit of a, you know, change in these designs and then um, they're good to go and off they go out into the world of media. Mm -hmm. And we would divvy these up using um, a website called Asana, oh, yeah, which is very helpful. It'll um, The way we set it up is you can kind of set up a project, like, for example, a, a promo for an event or something, and then everybody knows, Crystal knows that this promo is happening to get put into the news. I know that the promo needs a track. Uh, Michaela knows that she needs to make the promo. Daryl knows that he needs to make the slides for when they're talking about the promo. They can yeah. have that in the background, all these other things, mm -hmm. and then we can check them as they're being done so we can yes. chase yes. each other up. Lots we of little do. elements that yes. need to be chased up. Absolutely. Next one, which is kind of linked into this, is from Dominic Beerer. And how do you create visuals or lyric videos? How do you do that? PowerPoint. Yeah, in PowerPoint. I do. Well, you get your words first. <laughs> you put them in. So typically, <laughs> so we're doing a new pro song this, this Sunday, right? And I just did a demo and I, this one I sent to Ryan. So Ryan and Michaela um, and other people, but they do a lot of our lyric videos. Uh, so I sent Sometimes him you do. Sometimes I even do. I, I sent him the, the demo uh, with a real rough vocal just so he can hear the timing and the words and I sent him the words. And then if I really feel like it's got a specific style of look that I'm feeling, like that goes with the song, I'll tell him. Otherwise, th these guys just have free reign and just and they try to match the lyric vi visual to the style of the song. But a, f a fun fact, I remember back Ooh. in the day, you know, and this is how you grow with things, like probably, I don't know, five or six years ago, the thought of doing a lyric video, even in our organisation, was like a big thing. It's like, I don't, we have to pay someone else to do this. Like no one really had uh, maybe the time and experience to really just hone in and do it. Um, but... I think now we're at a point where it's we've realised it's not as big as it needs to be in our minds. It's mm. actually we can do it. Mm. We do have the ability. We have the skill. We've got the the resource to do it. And so we pump them out. You know, if, even on a Friday before the Sunday, we'll be creating all these lyric videos. And so it does add a lot of um, a lot of stuff. <laughs> what excitement, does it add? yeah, adds and excitement passion and, and helps the the, the atmosphere. Helps our praise. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. Can you please, um, when you are making your own visuals, get someone that's good at grammar to check over the lyrics <laughs> and make sure that it's yes. all correct? We had we a, a thing, a, a test thing, a little while ago. The lyric was uh, "the world has lots to offer" or something like that, and I accidentally wrote "the word has lots to offer," and it Ooh. means the exact opposite thing, and that's oh, not what we were wanting to say. So <laughs> please check it. It's very important. It is. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, we have a question here from Randy Castellano. Hi. New album release date, question mark. Mm. What we, is the release date? We've got some exciting know? things coming up this year. Yeah. In, uh, our main album, which we recorded in April, is going to be released around September. So keep your eyes and ears open for that. Um, but then you might have seen, if you follow us on social media, uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, we recorded like an acoustic style um Yes. What's the word? Pull like down a notch from our normal crazy production. Oh yeah, simplified. <laughs> simplified is the mm. word I'm looking for. And we did it live at Chapel in, in a round setting. And it's basically the same exact album, but done in those style. And this is going to be a great album to encourage churches, yeah. uh, maybe from where you're from, if you don't have the, all the crazy lights and everything that we've got here, to show you that you can still do these songs in your church yes. uh, and they still can be so powerful because the yeah. song is not the production. The song yes. can still be powerful no it's matter true. how you do it. Even just with an acoustic guitar, it can be powerful. Yeah. So uh, it just shows you that, which is great. Exactly. And we sort of want to try and pull down the the um, attitude or the mindset that Planet Shaker's music is too hard. Sorry, it isn't. No. And so we've really tried to model this so that we you can be encouraged to do Planet Shaker's songs mm. in your church. True. Now, this next one is from Christopher Peterson, not Peterson, like a guy on our stuff, but no, Peterson. Uh, I've been watching your services for the past five years all the way from Denmark and I absolutely Ooh. love it. Hope to visit you one day. Will you guys be doing a tour room technical, like tour, regarding your sounds, lights and broadcast setup and what equipment you use? Yes, I think we'll do that I think that'd day. be a good idea. What do you reckon? Yes, let's I reckon. do I reckon. that. Yeah, all right, let's do that. All right, last question is from Samuel Stevenson. Or Stephenson? Stephenson. Stevenson? Stevenson. I'll go with Stevenson. Um, how do you guys manage to get 
many people into church in the present situation? Because I see a lot of people in your live service. Mm. We have a really large building, which is awesome. So Mm -hmm. we can spread people out, which is great. But yeah, like what we have found is that people have been a bit nervous to come back. Yeah. Um, so we've prayed a lot and we've pulled down the spirit of fear, mm. but then we've also encouraged people to come to church in faith. And so I suppose practically and spiritually, we've been really after it. We have, you know, all of these different procedures like the QR code. Um, we ask people to use the hand sanitizing stuff. And um, yeah, we, we try and do all of those healthy kind of things to make it a great meaning, but. We also truly believe in the healing power of Jesus too and that coming to church, you can be prayed for and be healed. Mm, Amen. So if you have any questions, write them into the well at planetshakers.com and we can answer your questions next time. Thanks guys for joining us again. It was so great to be with you. Catch us next week. See you soon.